Good morning. Welcome to Bethany. It's the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. This morning we are concluding our time together in St. Paul's letter to the Romans. But beginning each day with some Romans is a good thing. Uh, those words that you, I, we are the, among those who are called to belong to him. Great way to begin your day individually and a great way to begin our day collectively. We're so glad you're here with us. I invite you to stand for opening him built on the rock.
Good morning. morning. Would you join me for the invocation on page four? Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from both. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, through the Spirit of holiness, was declared with power to be the Son of God by His resurrection from the dead. When Adam sinned, sin entered the entire human race. The law of God is good. The trouble is with me. I know perfectly well that what I do is at times wrong. And my guilty conscience shows that I agree that the law is good, but I can't help myself. So far. So often, when I've tried not to do wrong, I've done so anyway. What a miserable person I am. Lord, free me from the life that has done me when I sin, and rescue me from death. For the sake of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I am here to announce that there is no condemnation for you who are Christ's own people. God didn't deal with the problem of sin as something remote or unimportant. In His Son, Jesus, He personally took on the human condition and set it right once and for all. Now God has taken up residence in your life. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, the depth of the riches of your wisdom and knowledge, O God. You may be seated.
Good morning. Our first scripture reading today comes from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 8. Welcome people who are weak in faith. But don't get into an argument over differences of opinion. Some people believe that they can eat all kinds of food. Other people with weak faith believe that they can eat only vegetables. People who eat all foods should not despise people who eat only vegetables. In the same way, the vegetarian should not criticize people who eat all foods because God has accepted those people. Who are you to criticize someone else's servant? The Lord will determine whether his servant has been successful. The servant will be successful because the Lord makes him successful. One person decides that one day is holier than another. Another person decides that all days are the same. Every person must make his own decision. When people observe a special day, they observe it to honor the Lord. When people eat all kinds of foods, they honor the Lord as they eat, since they give thanks to God. Vegetarians also honor the Lord when they eat, and they too give thanks to God. It's clear that we don't live to honor ourselves, and we don't die to honor ourselves. If we live, we honor the Lord, and if we die, we honor the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Amen. 
like to invite any children who are present to come forward for the children's message. My mic fell off. All right, I think we have a few coming down the stairs. Oh, we have quite a bit coming down the stairs. I love it. All right, while they are making their way down the stairs, how was your morning then? Is everybody awake? Or are we a little like, ooh, because it was rainy and cloudy this morning? You didn't hear it at all? All right, I think we have just a few more. All right, come on up. All right. Okay, perfect. Come on up, bud. Thank you, I like my shoes too. Um, all right, so today our Bible reading from Romans can be a little confusing. How many of you heard it? You may hear it. Okay, it could be a little confusing to people. It's talking about eating meat and not eating meat and celebrating certain days and not celebrating certain days and people who do things and people who don't do things. All right? And PK, in a moment, is going to preach about and talk about the book of Romans. And so I think I found a way that can help us understand what was just read. All right? But I need three volunteers. Three volunteers. All right, Lexi, you've already done this. I'm gonna have you come up, and then Oliver. All right, so you guys come up here. All right, everybody scoot back. You don't have to sit on me, sit near me. Okay, so these are my three volunteers, and you each get to take like six blocks. Just grab, it doesn't matter what they look like. Here, I'm gonna help. I'm just gonna pour them in front of you. All right. All right, and then, excuse me, hold on. Hey, hey, your blocks are coming, right here. All right, I'm gonna give you guys 20 seconds. Okay, let me set my alarm. 20 seconds, and you need to build something. On your mark, get set, go. You have 10 seconds left. Hey, those aren't yours, take your brothers. You have five, four, three, two, one. All right, hands off the blocks. All right, now you guys, look at their creations. Are their creations the exact same thing? No, they're different. This one is, it's a spinning roller coaster. Do you know what your creation is? You forgot, it almost looks like sound waves. And then what's, what do we have over here? A cannon, all right. So all of these creations are different. Well, guess what? Raise your hand if you are the exact same as the person sitting next to you. Me. No, we're all different, right? How many of you have brown hair? Congregation, you can join in on this too. How many of you are tall? How many of you are left-handed? I'm fine. How many of you feel like you have big feet? How many of you feel like your ears are too small? Right, all of us as people, we're different from one another. And did you guys know, as Christians, we're different from one another as well? Do we all struggle with the same thing? No. Do we all have like the same exact faith? No. Do we all ask God the same exact questions? No. Do we all pray the exact same way? No, but what is the one thing that we, as God's children, all have in common? Who loves us? Jesus. Jesus. Who did Jesus die for? Uh, us, right? And who gets to see Jesus in heaven? Us, right? For those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we all have that in common. 
And so I found a Bible verse, okay? It's from the book of Ephesians. So can I see everybody's eyes? Because this is a really important verse. It says, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. So scripture tells us, no matter what we're doing, building roller coasters or sound waves or cannons or playing baseball or drinking a glass of milk or whatever we're doing, we as Christians can live our lives for the glory of God because Jesus lived his life for us so that we can be saved, we can be forgiven, and we can see him again. And that's pretty stinking cool, right? All right, so I want you guys to remember that what we have in common is the love of Christ. Okay, it covers us all. So, my forgiven children, let's go ahead and fold our hands. And then I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. So join me in prayer. Dear Lord, Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for for making us different. different. Help us us to live for you, to to walk with you, and to love like you. Forgive us when we aren't perfect. We love you, Lord Jesus. And all of God's children say, amen. All right, thank you. My volunteers, can you put your blocks back? The rest of you can go ahead and find your seats. Aren't children a blessing from God? In our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus tells us we can learn a thing or two from little children. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 18 in selected verses. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called the little child and had him stand among them. Then he said to them, I can guarantee you this truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes like this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a child like this in my name welcomes me. Be careful not to despise these little ones. I can guarantee that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? Suppose a man has a hundred sheep and one of them strays. Won't he leave the ninety-nine sheep in the hills to look for the one that has strayed? I can guarantee this truth. If he finds it, he's happier about it than about the ninety-nine that have not strayed. In the same way, your Father in heaven does not want one of these little ones to be lost. Here ends the reading from the Gospel. You may be seated.
if not the text. I'm pretty certain most of you are at least familiar with the title of Robert Fulgham's book, Everything I Ever Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Now, I do not believe the author was saying the world would be a better place if we were all first grade dropouts. Uh, He isn't stating that industry and technology and ability would have flourished as it did if we never learned anything beyond kindergarten. But I think those who have enjoyed that book would agree with the author that society might be a lot better if we daily lived out some of the lessons learned there, like share, play fair, Don't hit. And if you hurt, say that you are sorry. Live a balanced life. Learn some, think some, draw some, paint some, sing some, dance some, play some, work some every day. When you go out into the world, stick together. And of course, flush. Now, when Martin Luther said everything I ever needed to know I learned in Romans, well, he didn't actually say those words, but that's really what it means when you say Romans is the purest gospel. We should know it by heart, word for word. We should occupy ourselves with it every day for it concerns everything a Christian ought to know. When he wrote those words, I don't think he was saying the other 65 books of the Bible are unimportant, let alone not as inspired or inerrant as Romans. That is not what he was saying. He was not denying the expansive totality of revelation that comes from the entirety of scripture. In fact, he would say not only was Jesus the center of every book of the Bible, He said Jesus is the center of every single passage. So when he said everything we ever needed to know, we learned in Romans, or the way he said it, like I quoted it earlier, I think what he was simply saying is, if we live out that which we have learned in Romans this summer, our service will be sweeter, our witness will be richer, and our church will be stronger. For in these words, we have learned what every Christian ought to know, namely, what is the long gospel? Sin and punishment, grace and faith, righteousness, Christ and God, good works, love, hope, and cross, and also how we are to conduct ourselves toward everyone, be they righteous or sinner, strong or weak, friend or foe, and even how we are to treat ourselves. So how do we live toward the strong and the weak, righteous and sinner, friend and foe? You know, you learned. We strive to live in harmony with everyone, looking down on no one, never assuming we are better than someone, even blessing those who might persecute us, even as the Lord has blessed us who persecuted him. That was all found in Romans 12. The God who who is eternal and holy, whose nature is divine, who is the creator of all and your own father and his son, perfect man and fully God, holy and eternal, who took on not only our flesh, but took on our punishment, all in Romans 1 and 5. We learned about sin And we learned about grace. We learned that no one is righteous in and of themselves. No one truly seeks God in a way that is pure. Everyone has turned away and all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Romans 3. And yet we learn the gift is not like the trespass. For we have been made right by by God's grace. That's his undeserved favor in Christ. Through redemption that comes in Jesus. Romans 3. We learned about punishment and we learned about faith. We learned that the wages of sin is death and Jesus was put to death for our trespasses. 
And we learn that we have peace with God through faith in Jesus Christ. That was Romans 3, 4, and 5. We learned about law and we learned about gospel. The law is good. It's God's will for you. His perfect and pleasing and holy will. And yet, because of fallen nature, that which was intended for our life has brought about death for the law simply exposes our sin. Romans 7. But the gospel is God's gift. It is the power of God to save all who believe in Jesus. That was chapter one. We even learned about how we ourselves live as sacrifices, holy and pleasing to him. Knowing that we are more than conquerors in Christ and nothing can separate us from his love. That was chapters 12 and eight. You know, we even learned about gathering, connecting, and sending right there in Romans. We learned that God has poured his love into our hearts through the Spirit, that while we were one-time enemies, he has gathered us to himself, and now he is known as our Abba Father, Romans 5 and 8. We learned that like the apostle, we are to be filled with anguish, over those who do not yet know Jesus. For our God is a God of Jew and Gentile alike, God of the circumcised and uncircumcised, connecting us together, making us one in Christ. Found that in Romans 10 and Romans 3. And we heard that people can only call on God if they believe in him. They can only believe in him if they hear of him, and they can only hear about him if some are sent to him. Romans 10. You know, we even learned some of those kindergarten truths right here in Romans. We learned the importance of sharing. Give help to one another as they need. Chapter 16. We learned about playing fair. Accept one another just as God in Christ has accepted you. Chapter 15. We learned about living a balanced life this morning in chapter 14 balanced life to say, you know, some accept special days and others are all the same. Some don't eat meat and some do, but they all give thanks to God, knowing that no one lives to himself alone or dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to him. That's a balanced life. We learned about the importance of going out into the world together. Live in a unity of spirit, chapter 13. And believe it or not, we learned about the importance of flushing. The next time the old Adam or old Eve starts talking to you, saying, you are a miserable person. You don't do the good you should do. You haven't done the good you should do. You do the evil you shouldn't do. The next time the voice says, hey, God's really good at forgiving sin, and you're really good at doing sin, so why not do something to let him be good at that what she's good at? Flush it, hush it, and rush to the word that says, there is no condemnation for you who are in Christ Jesus. So as we live what we have learned this summer, this I know, our service will be sweeter our witness will be richer, and our church will be stronger, we pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for this word from Romans. And we pray that you would send us your spirit and strengthen us each day to live that which we have learned. For the glory of your holy name in which we pray, amen.
The Lord has given us all good things, and so as an act of discipleship, we give him back a percentage of our own, the gifts that he has given us for the furtherance of his ministry. Let's take a moment to consecrate these gifts and offerings before the Lord and give him thanks for them. Lord of all good, our gifts we bring you now. Tokens of love and pledges they shall be. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus as stewards true receive, and gladly as thou blessest us, to thee our fruit, first fruits give. Amen. I invite you to stand and confess with me the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 9 of your bulletin. We believe in one. At the conclusion of each petition in today's prayers, I'm going to say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gifts of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your holy church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and the sacraments. Make them perfect in love and in all good works, and establish in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labors of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavors may be increased among all people. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the schools, all the schools, Lord, whether they be parochial, whether they be public or private, and all the colleges, universities, and centers of research, and those who teach and work in them. Grant your wisdom in such measure that people may serve you honorably in church and state, and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth and your word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the birth of Callie Ann Star Hicks. We thank you that you have given a, a new life to this family and pray that you would bless her and bring her quickly to the waters of baptism. Lord, we thank you for the new life that you will be given Lainey Carol Starr this afternoon through the waters of baptism. We pray that you would continue to watch over and guide her in faith as she continues to grow. 
We also pray that you would keep all of our children in the covenant of baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in the lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in spirit of affection and service, that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort those who are sorrow, in need, or sick. Father, we pray especially today for Rose and Edward, for Roger, Michelle, Mary, Suzanne, Heidi, Levi, Tom, Grace, Phyllis, Jerry, Christina, and Ron. Lord, be with those who suffer persecution for faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love. Take them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father. For the sake of him who died and rose again and who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. You may be seated. You know, Martin Luther taught in his large catechism about the Lord's Prayer that we just prayed and how that's kind of a a confession and absolution. And today, as we've confessed our sins and we've heard the words, you are forgiven, we also experience Christ's true body and his true blood in with and under the bread and the wine for the forgiveness of our sins for the assurance of our salvation and the strengthening of our faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he's betrayed, took bread and when given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink of this, all of you. This is the covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
I invite you to stand. Now may this Christ, your body and blood, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, and this day forward to life everlasting, go in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift that you have given us, the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that it would continue to strengthen our faith, assure us of the forgiveness of sins that we have through faith in Jesus, and lead us toward eternal life. God, may we take this message of forgiveness and new life to the places where we live, learn, labor, and laugh. Be with us and guide us. Amen. Uh, We have a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, School and everything is full in session, and with that comes a bunch of ministry events full in session as well. I want to draw your attention to the back pages, starting in page 15 of the Chimes. Uh, On page bottom of page 16, uh, we talk about the first Bibles, third graders. Uh, If you have a third grade student or grandchild, uh, you might as well, you might not might as well, you should sign up for that, right? Um, Also, for those who are confirmation age, uh, on page 19, it talks about a confirmation informational meeting uh, that starts in about 30 minutes. And then finally, uh, on September 23rd from 8 to noon, Bethany is participating with other churches from around Long Beach in a citywide Serve Day event. You can go right there to the website, sign up, and it'll give you all the information you need. With that, receive this blessing. Our salvation is nearer now than when we first believe. So let us be clothed with Christ and forget about satisfying the sinful self. Amen.
peace. Serve the Lord with joy. Thanks.